Hi Megan, these are some of the suggestions that I have for you. If you have any questions or if you'd like to see something else, please just let me know. This book that I want to show you is one of the books in our How To series. It's basically like a young, um, young child, just routine series. So this particular one is How to Tuck in Your Sleepy Lion. So you can get the series as a set if you want or you can just get the individual book. So this would be for kids who maybe don't like to go to bed and they can talk about how their little lovey or their lion goes to sleep and all the different things that you do before you go to sleep. So it has beautiful pictures, it's a board book, it's just a great quality, cute story about putting a lion to bed and just the little routine that you might do before bedtime. So again, that's how to tuck in your sleepy lion. This book is called Nibbles, and this is about a little nibble monster who loves books. And I'm just going to kind of show you. It has flaps in here. So this story is about a little monster called Nibbles. And this is such a fun book for toddlers. They love, love, love this book. Nibbles likes to nibble soap and nibbles nibble socks. Nibbles chomps on rubber ducks and nibbles munches clocks. Nibbles loves to nibble toes and nibbles nibbles hooks. But Nibbles' favorite thing of all to nibble on is books. So then, oh no, where's Nibbles? And he nibbled his way through the book right there. So then you find him and, oh, he went into a book. And the book that he went to, into was Goldilocks and the Three Bears. And then what you can do, which is really cute, is within that page, there's a little book in here, how Nibbles gets into Goldilocks' story. And then oh, he nibbled his way through Goldilocks. And then he nibbles his way through Little Red Riding Hood. And then he, oh, he nibbled again. And now he goes into Jack and the Beanstalk. He goes in and the goose ended up getting nibbles. Brings him back and then he drops him back into his own story. Yay, the Golden Goose has dropped nibbles back into his own book. Ouch. Thank you, Golden Goose. Now quick, let's close the crate before nibbles escapes. So that they have a lot of fun doing that part. And then, phew, well done. Now you really mustn't take your eyes off nibbles. Not even for one second. Stop. Can you hear something? What's that noise? Nibble. Choo, choo. And then, oh no, nibbles. And then there's a hole in the back of the book where nibbles went through. So this is Nibbles, another toddler favorite book. This book I want to show you is The Usborne Look Inside a Castle. It has over 60 flaps to lift and it is really remarkable. It talks all about what it was like to live in a castle. So it's wonderful to give to your children as they're learning European history in school. Um, they can open up the castle walls with these flaps and take a look at what's inside. They can understand why were castles walled in? What was inside these walls? And um, these, they can see, oh, these were actual buildings that were used and what their purposes were. Um, if this castle kitchen is really neat, it goes through all the different functions of the kitchen. So many wonderful flaps to lift in here, just all over the place. My children love this um, book. And then it has a jousting tournament, and they can learn about what a jousting tournament does and who wins. And we've got flaps within flaps. We have the tournament rule book. Um, that goes through a couple pages of, of um, rules through there. and Then all the process that it took to become a knight. And finally, the siege. And it's the battle at the castle. And they can open it up and see what the soldiers are doing and how they would use their different tools to do battle. And then it goes to the recreation and how they would hunt outside the castle. And again, they have all of these flaps to lift to absorb that information. This is a fascinating book, Usborne Look Inside a Castle. This book that I want to show you is one of our Muddle and Match books. And this is such a fun book, and I'm going to show you why. So on one side of the page, there is the story, and each story has a different alliteration. So this particular one is P. And then there is a image on this side. And then they can switch up the story and the image using all these different tabs here. So they changed it and then they have a different story here and a different image. Or you can just turn one flap at each time and read the story that way with all of the tongue twister alliterations and the picture. So it's just a great way to create so many different stories in one 
and I just think this book is so fun for young readers either to create the story part while you read aloud. It's just a great book and for kids who are just discovering words and it's fun to say the alliterations really fast. This is just a great book to have in your library. Again, this is one of our muddle and match books. There's a bunch of different titles for this book, so if you're interested in those, um, you can look on our website and see what else we have. This particular one is Imagine. This book that I want to show you is one of our dual reader books, and this particular one is the Usborne Book of Fairy Tales. And this is such a cute book, and I'm going to show you why. So it has some classic fairy tales in here. So here's Cinderella. So right off the bat, you can see that the pictures are really big, and they are just really cute and engaging for your child to look at. And then the text, this has simpler text that's easier to read on top, and then more complex text on the bottom. So the way that this book can be read is it can be read um, fast or easier with just reading the top text if you need to go to bed really quickly or if your child is just beginning how to read they can read the top text and you can read the bottom text so it makes sense if you just read the top if you just read the bottom or if you read the top and the bottom together so for example um, that's Cinderella looking out of the window she lives with her stepmother and two ugly stepsisters they are always really horrible to her they make her work all day she cleans the house and cooks the meals. She wears old clothes and sleeps in a cold, creepy room. So you could just read it. That Cinderella looking out of the window. They make her work all day. Where that story still makes sense, but then as they begin to um, gain confidence in their reading, they can add the bottom, or um, they can read the bottom, or the top part, and you can read the bottom. And it's like that way through this whole, whole book. So there's the story of Cinderella, and Sleeping Beauty, Little Red Riding Hood, just some classic fairy tales are in here. And it is a really cute, good quality, great book to have in your collection. Again, this is the Osborne Book of Fairy Tales. This book that I want to show you is the Osborne Fairy Tales for Bedtime. It's a beautiful hardcover book with cloth binding and a ribbon marker. There's 11 classic fairy tales in this book surrounded by beautiful illustrations. I love how at the first page of each story there's a gorgeous silhouette of the main character and then you have the title, a very pretty picture, and a small little blurb of text. This one says, Cinderella, picture of the glass slipper, once upon a time there was a beautiful young girl named Ella, but everyone called her Cinderella. And then the next pages have not as many illustrations, but your children can lay down and listen to you read. Put the marker in when you're done with the story. And again, you start over a nice silhouette of the main character, title, picture, short little blurb. They lay down in their beds and you begin to read. This is a fabulous book to keep in your basket of read aloud books. These fairy tales are classic and engaging. Your children will love them. Again, this is the Osborne Fairy Tales for Bedtime. This book that I want to show you is called One, Two, Three Counting, and this is a great book for tummy time for young babies. It folds out like this, and it has numbers one through ten. You can flip it over on the other side, just like that. And this is a great book for young babies because it has the black and the white contrast for them to look at and to be able to notice the pictures. But then it also has the pop of color and it can grow with your child. So for example, I currently have a young baby and a two and a half year old. So while my young baby's in tummy time, I'll spread this out and then work with my two and a half year old on his numbers and counting. And so this is just a great book for all ages. It can grow with your child. This one, two, three counting book is fabulous. This book that I want to show you is Baby's Very First Slide and See Under the Sea. This book is so cute. It's one of our Slide and See Baby books. So, as you can see, they can put their finger on this little slider here and it changes the picture. Just kind of flip it through. So this dolphin, they can move here. There are no stories in this book. The whole point of this type of book is to explore um, the book, to look at the pictures, and to um, just practice, have fun moving things. Um, but you could make your own story about this if you wanted. Where's the dolphin? Where's the panda? Where's the bunny? Where's the turtle, etc. 
So the jellyfish goes wibble wobble. There's different indentations here. Um, and the quality of these is fabulous. They're not gonna break on you. We've had this book over a year and a half and all of ours are still just fine. So again, this slides, the sea lion catches the fish, so cute. There's indentations again. Oh, I love this one. So the, watch this hermit crab down here and then I'll do this one so you can see better. And then, oh, it comes out. So that's a fun one. And again, this is bumpy. Just the bright, beautiful colors. Here's a finger trail. So this is baby's very first slide and see under the sea. Thanks for watching. Again, if you want to see something else or if you have any questions, please just let me know and I'll see what I can do.